I'll turn now to uh, Mary Louise Pratt. Uh, you do have a handout if you wanted to take a look at this. I'm looking here at the one with the concept-centric circles. And so as I <clears throat> go through this part, feel free to um, uh, look at this, just try to give you a little bit of a visual uh, on what I'm trying to lay out here as um, some distinctions. I'm going to talk a little bit about German cultural studies and what uh, Mary Louise Pratt calls transculturation. And I'll call this from contact zones to transcultural spaces. Mary Louise Pratt enters the discussion of the transcultural via cultural studies. Her Zeitpunkt is that of the political imperial eye, the Auge. And in her book, Imperial Eyes, Travel Writing and Transculturation, she first examines what she terms contact zones. How does she define them? She defines contact zones as social spaces where disparate cultures meet, clash, and grapple with each other, often in highly asymmetrical relations of domination and subordination. On this point, Pratt's study intersects with Robert Burns' definition of culture in his introduction uh, to the German Cultural Studies volume as the site of critical resistance as well as ideological manipulation. Not only Wierlacher, but also Bernd Thum locates the center of intercultural hermeneutics and research in the plurality of and the differences between cultures. But because the discipline of intercultural Germanics, like some within German cultural studies, is often focused on the tensions in opposing themes. Wierlacher uses the term Gegentämen, such as between the foreign, that is the other, and one's own, the field has a difficult time moving beyond Begegnung to Treffen, from conflict to peace. This point of limitation, I suggest, is the very point of departure for transcultural German studies. As her study progresses, Pratt maps various intersections between travelogues and other forms of expression both inside and outside Europe. To my mind, Pratt's major strength lies in her examinations of various processes of what she calls transculturation. As Suzanne Zantop would do later, Pratt devotes considerable space to the expeditions and the writings of the natural scientist and explorer Alexander von Humboldt. In particular, she takes up the question to what extent Humboldt was a transculturator, transporting to Europe knowledges that are American, South American in origin, in other words, producing European knowledges infiltrated by non-European ones. To what extent within relations of colonial subordination, she asks, did Americans inscribe themselves on him, Humboldt, as well as on America? And near the center of her book, she turns her attention away from the initial encounters and collisions between two or more cultures and transitions herself from contact zones to what I call transcultural spaces. And as you can see here from the uh, concentric circles, the overlap, the Durchdringung, the Vernetzung, the intermingling of cultures, also the possibility of more than two cultures intersecting. Now, I have to admit uh, a little bit of Zelp's critique here. Um, it's a little messier than this. This, this. this takes a kind of classical form, doesn't it? Uh, a, B, C, and it's well-rounded, nice contours. I don't know, maybe that's part of me. But in any case, uh, this could be uh, actually a very small space or a larger space. And it probably is best for this to be asymmetrical rather than so uh, structured. Throughout her study, however, Pratt remains largely focused on the writer's inventions of various others in literature and the projection of the imaginary onto the rest of the world. Pratt's thesis raises a number of challenging questions. Are there dimensions of contact zones in which and out of which transcultural spaces emerge that go beyond particular situations and by analogy also beyond the intercultural? Does the heterogeneous and hybrid nature of cultures not presuppose the possibility of the evolution of cultural and intercultural knowledge 
that has the potential to create new constellations of communal living. If so, where are they and how do they function in the fields they co-occupy? To be sure the effects of transcultural interaction become apparent when initially strong contrasts and differences are transformed into new and emerging unities, such as transcultural German studies. <laughs>